Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and uh, in this short video I'm going to look at an aspect of printing on the Epson P700 here. Now it's a 13 inch pigment ink based printer. Um, I've got a review and quite a few other articles as well so this is specifically just looking at printing on canvas. Now normally when I think of printing on canvas I think of printing from a roll and on a bigger printer than this. But you can get sheets of canvas and in this instance uh, this is a matte canvas. You can see there's possibly a slight sheen to the uh, surface but very little. It's effectively a matte canvas. Uh, this is an old uh, HP branded one uh, which is 380 grams, has no problem feeding through here. What I would say is if you want to take sheets of canvas you can have up to 13 inch width here. Now 13 inch rolls of canvas are probably not common. I've never seen one. Um, I test this because I've got these uh, A3 plus or 13 inch by 19 inch sheets. So you can get 17 inch rolls of canvas. So you could cut off 13 inch sections of 17 inch canvas and you could print on 13 inch by 17 inch. So that's almost as big as this. So you can get fairly large size canvases. Uh, this is a uh, profiling test target. I uh, made the uh, profile for this. I've made a custom profile for it. There, there isn't any profiles available for the P700-900. And I would say profiles for the 700-900 are interchangeable. So whereas I'm talking about P700 here, if you've got a P900, it's exactly the same, but wider. Uh, from a profiling point of view, there's no real difference whatsoever. There are a few minor differences, but you can use profiles interchangeably. One of the things I notice when I'm making a profile is uh, I take a chance to have a look at how the media looks. Now, this is not a, a test image as such, but it covers a very wide range of colours and greater scale tones. So you've got a black bar across the top here. And I can see that, yeah, it's a fairly good black, but it's not a really deep black. Now, I wouldn't expect that on a matte media like this. If I want really deep blacks, I'll use a brighter paper or um, a gloss, semi gloss paper, something like that. You don't tend to get really deep blacks uh, with, with pigment inks like this on media like this. Now, in terms of how you actually make use of the media once you've printed it, uh, lots of options. You can frame it, you can, you can mount it on a stretcher. Um, what I have noticed that if you want to varnish it, and in varnishing it, the colours will take on a, an intensity and depth that you don't get off the media itself. I don't use canvas a lot myself. I have some uh, glossy canvas I use occasionally. And that doesn't need coating, but you do have to be a bit careful about uh, how you handle it. But this is just a basic, fairly fine texture canvas. Um, I can see on the side, on the non-coated side, it's slightly warmer. I can see some flax in it, but the coating on the front is a bright white matte uh, coating. So that's, I know it's going to work because I've made a profile for it. Now the image I'm going to print, is so I've just picked one um, at random here, with fairly light colours. Um, I don't know exactly how this one is going to look. Um, I simply wouldn't normally print something like this on canvas. It's not one of the sorts of prints I do. But I know a lot of people do like doing canvas. So there's the image. It's a misty sunset scene at Cannon Beach on the Oregon coast, so it's the Pacific there, with the characteristic mist you often get coming at sort of sunset, and it gives a very distinctive light. It's one of the reasons I love visiting the Pacific Northwest, the coast there. Uh, it's the light you can get around the sea. But anyway, that's opened up in Photoshop. You could open up and process it in anything you like. But I'm going to print, not directly from Photoshop, which works fine, I'm going to use the Epson print layout software. Now it's free software, I've covered it in my written reviews and other videos, so I'm not going to go into details on how to use it, save that with this image that's open in uh, Photoshop and I've prepared it ready to print, um, I'm just going to use the automate function and send that to Epson print layout, which is working effectively as a plugin. So it'll handle the, uh, the, the processing there. Now, here 
one I opened earlier, instantly you may notice that the image looks slightly different. That's because I'm making use of a feature of Epson Print Layout here. I'm not going to print this one, by the way, this way, uh, which is doing a gallery wrap. So it is reflecting part of the image around the edge. Now for this, you specify the frame size that you want, and then it will wrap the image for however big a margin you want over it. So to print this, you need to know the size of the actual uh, stretcher you're going to do, the wooden stretcher, and then you put the canvas around it uh, and, and tack it in place or glue it in place, depending on how you're doing your mounting. So in this, you can see it's stretched, the, it's mirrored the image around the edge. Now you can have a soft edge, you can do various bits and pieces. You can set the sizes quite carefully. You can set custom sizes of stretcher. But remember, we're limited in this instance to a 13 inch by 19 inch print area. So we knock off an inch border on either side, that gives us 11 inches. Um, sorry for people who work in metric, this, uh, this is still, uh, um, yeah, I still think of the print sizes in inches. I do calculations in millimetres. Um, I happen to know in, in the US people use mostly inches. Here people, depending on how old you are, use a mixture of inches and metric and elsewhere people use metric. But you can work it out, it's, it's hardly rocket science and you can set the units here. So I'm just going to be talking about inches because it's convenient. Um, so 13 inches there, inch border, that gives us 11 inches, if an inch on either side. Uh, if an inch at top and bottom, that would give us 17 by 11. So that would give us a maximum size of 17 by 11 with an inch border. Now, 17 by 11 is not a common size. You're much more likely to get stretches 8 by 10, 8 by 12, uh, 10 by 10, which will work on this for a second. But it changes the image, so be prepared to crop if necessary. Now, that's set there with a uh, type gallery rack, and it's set for that, but I'm just going to print normally. I'm just going to go to standard, and it resize, and there's a normal print uh, with, with a border and whatever. I could print a dark border on it if I wanted, but I'm just going to do this just as a normal print, printed straight out onto the yeah, media here. Now, I've selected in um, Epson Print Layout here, I've selected the printer type, the media type, and it's important to use the right media. Uh, I've also loaded the media in here, and I've set the media type to canvas matte on the size here. So I always set the media type and size on the screen here, as well as the software. Um, some people say, you know, why do you bother? It's because I'm often chopping and changing media types, sizes, and it's like a belt and braces. It just helps remind me that I've got the right media settings. If you're confident you're never going to make a mistake, or if you don't use many types of media, you can set it and leave it and not worry about this. But I've wasted too many sheets of paper uh, in the past by setting the wrong settings somewhere and forgetting to double check. Uh, it's like the old adage, measure twice, cut once. It's the same for doing printing, particularly if you're using media that's not cheap. Uh, it's one thing if it's just plain paper, if it's expensive art papers uh, or sheets of canvas, probably you don't want to waste that many of them. But anyway, I've set it here. Orientation portrait. I won't use the scale to fit option. Um, I've set the margins to position the print here and in the colour settings, I've set it at Use ICC Profile. And the profile I've selected is one of my own, one that I've made. Now, I would say all my profiles are mentioned in the written review uh, for the P700. Uh, there's a list of them there. That's on the North Light Images website. If you'd like any of those, let me know and you know, email me and they're free for non-commercial use. If you want to use them commercially, well, maybe a donation and would be accepted, but um, they're free for non-commercial use, so just experimenting with them. Um, so here we go, that's a custom profile. Um, I've also set the rendering intent to relative colorimetric and black point compensation. Now this is one of those things that Depending on the image and the media you're using, sometimes perceptual may look better than relative colorimetric. 
Sometimes relative colorimetric looks better. It just depends. There's no hard and fast rules. I can fortunately flip between these because I've got a form of soft proofing on here which will give me an idea, although limited by the fact this is a screen, uh, and screens never match prints, uh, just, just is the way things are. Uh, so I can check this. I would say that if you're using matte media and relative colorimetric, tick the black point compensation box because that stops your shadows being crunched up, which you're liable to get on matte media. Uh, now, I've addressed this in other aspects in, in looking at profiling and things like that, but this is just a while you're using it. If you have a choice here, swap between the options. If one looks better, use what looks better. Trust your own judgment for it. So anyway, we've got everything set up here. I want one copy printing. Uh, everything is set for this, and I can now just click on print. Now, this is going to take a little while. I'm running it on a slowish laptop and uh, it's going to work out the print data. It's quite a large file. Resize, whatever, do all the stuff that the driver does and send it to here. This is the point where I get my cup of coffee and uh, wait for something to happen. The printer is connected wirelessly. Uh, it works absolutely fine like that. I've used it on Ethernet, I've used it on USB. Um, whatever is convenient, seems to work okay. Would just say when you set up your printer, if you're using a Mac, do make sure you've not accidentally selected the AirPrint driver. Um, the AirPrint driver has a limited functionality and if you're using a printer like this and on a Mac and you suddenly notice that a lot of your printer settings are not there, then check that you've not accidentally selected AirPrint. Um, it's easily done. Um, I warn against it in all my reviews and everything because it just causes people all kinds of problems. Now, here we go, it's loaded it and it's printing. Nice thing about the P700 is I get a little image here showing the uh, print that's going to come out. That's the image data and there's a light inside so I can actually check that it's printing and it's printing very nicely. I see some blue sky. So there we go, it's printing. I mentioned earlier that I prepared the image in Photoshop. Um, I often get asked by people, what do I do for the, my images that come out of the camera for making a print like this? Well, it's very rarely that even if I'm using a high resolution camera and I've got everything spot on in exposure, it's very rarely that a print image comes out that's absolutely perfect for printing. So. I use Photoshop because I've used it for, well, well over 25 years. So I know Photoshop. Um, I still use some techniques in editing my images that would not be unfamiliar to myself when I was using a darkroom 25 years ago. Um, the, the, the thought process is similar, but with lots of other things you can do as well. So I've processed the raw image I always take raw images because they give you more capability for altering things. I've processed that and I've adjusted the tonality a little bit, probably in camera raw. Now, if you use Lightroom, then that's fine. Use Lightroom. Personally, I really just don't like it, especially for printing. And in fact, the only bit of it I like is the raw processing bit of it. I don't like the forced use of the catalog. However, opinions differ, and I know a lot of people do like using it, but this is just using Photoshop. I've adjusted a few levels on here. I may have adjusted the vibrance of the picture, knowing that it's coming out as a print. Sometimes, particularly with uh, sunset scenes like this, you lose a bit of the richness that you get in a picture on the screen when it comes out as a print. So you need to give a bit of a bump into the colours. Now, the blue sky is one thing, um, the oranges of uh, another, so maybe you just need to adjust some colours a little bit. And that this image probably did not need much adjustment at all, perhaps a bit of levels adjustment, just getting it so it's about the right brightness on the screen. Now, this is one area where I always say if you're testing new media, testing things, use a known test image. Because if you print a known test image and it comes out looking wrong, you know there's something in your print setup wrong. 
if you print one of your own images and it comes out looking wrong, you genuinely have no idea where the problem was. Was it when you were taking the photo? Was it uh, when you processed the raw file? At some point when you know, you've no idea. So always use a test image to start with. Uh, because if something comes out too dark here, and it's one of my images, my first thought is I've got some of my editing wrong. Now, if I have already printed a test image, and I've got a video about using test images, uh, works for any printer by the way, not just, just this one, but if I'm printing a test image and that looks great, I know I've got the printing sussed. I know the profile's right, I know my print settings are right. My picture comes out looking wrong, well, that's my fault. And you do have to accept that with printers like this, not making a print that works is almost certainly your fault. It's rarely that I get a print come out wrong and think, oh, it's something wrong with the printer. Now, that goes for myself. I'm going to say it goes for almost everybody else as well. Um, Experience is what helps. Anyway, the print is coming out. And one aspect I mentioned about preparing your images, and this is obviously an image that's not had much done to it, because I can see a dust spot on it. Now that also tells me that this was taken quite a few years ago on uh, not one of my current cameras, and it's where uh, dust could be problems. Now, I can edit, I get that, but that's a wasted sheet. So do check your skies and things before you do prints for things like dust. If you've got a, a camera where you change the lenses, this is even more so for mirrorless because they don't have the shutter in front of them. So they're a little bit more prone to dust. In fact, modern mirrorless cameras in handling dust are where DSLRs were 10, 12 years ago. Um, there's still, dust is a problem with mirrorless cameras um, because the shutter's not there. But anyway, what of the print? Well, there is the print. Printed on canvas. Um, dusk at Cannon Beach in Oregon. Uh, there we go. Uh, so it's got some nice color on it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I've got the delicacy of tone I wanted. I'm not sure how it's going to show up on the video here uh, in terms of the colour. Um, I will interpose the uh, original image as well so you can get an idea of it. But um, yeah, I'd be quite pleased with that as a print. Well, apart from the dust spot that I noticed on it. Um, fortunately, I've got boxes of this stuff, so it doesn't matter. But you don't really want to be wasting too many of these. Anyway, there you go. There is a canvas print. I could have printed it with, you know, for uh, putting on a stretcher or anything like that. It's fairly muted colours, so they suit this matte sort of media. Um, works very well, looks nice. I hope that's been of use. I'm going to be doing some more. I've got the P700 here for a while. So I'm going to be doing some more specific types of prints, covering a little bit about the print, about the image preparation first as well. Uh, so if you've got any questions, please do feel free to ask them uh, on with this video. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. Thank you.